it's Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So today's the day that I'm going to be shipping the fish to Melbourne. It's quarter to nine in the morning. As you can see, I'm still waking the fish up, slowly turning the lights on. So the fish I'm sending are in this tank down here. So I'm sending my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold to Melbourne. They're still fry. Some of them are pretty much full grown, I suppose, if the females would be uh, three centimetres. Some of them are pushing four. So they are my fry, they're still my babies. I'm attached to them actually, it's just, it is kind of sad for me to sell them because they're the first uh, babies that I'm going to sell from the fish room, so they do mean a lot to me. But I'm really happy and um, basically proud of them that they look beautiful and that they're ready to be sold and go out into the big world. But yeah, I thought I'd show you guys what I have ready to pack these fish. I've never done this before, so if you guys have done it before, give me some tips in the comments, that'll be great. But yeah, it's my first time doing this. The Toll sales rep has sent me full packing instructions, how to pack live fish, how to do it properly, and what their regulations are. I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. I've done a few practice runs with packing these because I don't normally pack fish like this. But anyway, I'm gonna be packing them to the way they have told me to pack them on the phone and in email. So that's what I'm gonna do because I don't wanna drive all that way out there. And then they say, no, nah, you can't ship them like this because that'll be devastating. <laughs> um, Meanwhile, just have a look at this, guys. This is how the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold start their life. Just poking their heads out of their mum's shell. These guys are about three days free swimming now, but they're venturing further and further out of their mother's shell each day. And they just look so cool, just at the entrance of their mum's shell. Look how well she's dug that shell and covered it up. You would not know it's there from other angles. Pretty much she can only fit in that shell. She can block the entrance with her body and protect those little guys. And they look cool, just sitting at the entrance there. If I was to scare them by accident, they'll just all dart right back into that shell. And the mother can send a signal to them. Just poking her head in and they'll all go back in as well. The other female at the back there, she has babies as well. And they're a little bit older, they're about maybe three days ahead of these little guys. But I just love them at this stage. They look awesome just poking their heads out of that shell, clinging to it for shelter. The guys I'm selling today, I believe, were born in September 2019, and it's now May 2020. So it takes a while to grow these guys up, but I have quite a few that are going to be at a sellable size soon. So again, if you're in Sydney, and you want to set up a tank like this, awesome looking Shelly tank, watching the interesting behavior of these fish, watching them interact, and seeing these little guys breed in their life cycle. It's just an amazing thing to see so much care from a fish that is literally two to three centimeters long. Look how small she is. And she's, she'll be very aggressive towards me. She's not scared of my fingers, you can see there, she's trying to bite it. When I put my hand in the tank to clean the tank, there you go, you see the size of her? When I put my hand in the tank to clean the tank, she will bite my hand like crazy, and it feels like little pinpricks. <laughs> but the amount of care that comes from these little guys is incredible. So if you want some awesome little Shellys for your tank, something different, yeah, just hit me up, guys. These guys really are underrated. They're a beautiful little Tanganyikan shell dweller, cichlid from uh, Lake Tanganyika in Africa. You can see the beautiful coloration they have. Gold bodies with that purple iridescence down their sides. Anyway, there you go. I thought I'd share that with you while I'm getting ready to pack these fish for today. Hey guys, so this mess is basically <laughs> what I need to ship fish. Okay, so the big one that I didn't know about was I'm actually using a, a styrofoam box that's been used before, so hopefully that's okay to begin with. But you need this logo to ship fish. You need this logo on the lid and on the bottom of the box, and the numbers have to be exactly the same. So I can't exceed that uh, weight range on this lid. It has to be underneath that weight range. So I'm good there. In the box, we've got this liner here. It's just an aquarium bag that I've had to cut in half and um, just so I can wrap the bags up. Underneath there, we've got five layers of newspaper and then another air bag, just a, an aquarium bag filled up with air just as packing. And then these are the bags that the fish are going into. 
So there's an aquarium bag, five layers of newspaper. Obviously, I've just cut the newspaper up smaller and laid it five times because we required to have a minimum of five layers between the bags. So they're going to be double bagged. And yeah, there's five layers of, of newspaper between the two bags. Unfortunately, I can't lay the bags down in here. They, that's a restricted um, way of packing. They want me to stand the bags upright like this. So the bags aren't gonna be packed like I usually pack, and normally I'll pack that much of the bag will be water, and the rest would be oxygen. So I'm gonna have a very small amount of water, a bit of air, they're gonna look like balloons almost to fit in this short box. They're not, this box isn't tall at all. Also ship one of these heat pads. I'll be at the airport at around 3 p.m. They, well, they told me they'll get to Melbourne at around 11.30 p.m. My customer will hopefully pick them up tonight. So I've just come back into the fish room because it's a lot warmer in here. And I don't want you just looking at a styrofoam box the entire time I'm talking. I'd rather you look at my face. <laughs> and um, So it's generally recommended that you starve fish for at least 24 hours, up to 48 hours, prior to shipping. And that's purely because uh, you don't want them excreting into the bag, into the water, um, and polluting their water. So if you starve them for a day, two days, I'm just going off what I've been told and, and, um, and what I've seen in other people's videos that they've done. As, as a guide, because I've never done it before. I'm also gonna add a drop of prime to each bag. Detoxifies ammonia and nitrates and everything, so that will also help get some footage of them in the guy's tank, because he has shown me his tank, and his aquarium looks beautiful. It is a stunning aquarium, and I can't wait to see these guys in that aquarium thriving. All right, guys, I'm gonna go and do the rest of the stuff I need to do today, and I'll show you later, hopefully, me packing those fish in a somewhat organized manner. Here we go. I'm gonna get a start on this. Water in the bag. Try to see how much water that is. Not a lot. I'm gonna catch some fish. First thing I'm gonna do, add a drop of prime. The trick with this is getting enough oxygen in there, because these are gonna be quite small packages. As you can see, there's a lot of water. So I'm going to use my air pump. This is, going to, this is kind of awkward to do because it's such a small package. The air pump should help me inflate the bag because I tested this yesterday. It's much easier to fill these bags up when you've got the whole bag to use, but I don't unfortunately in this occasion. Okay, that's helped inflate the bag. Get my elastic bands. Again guys, I wouldn't normally bag fish like this. When I'm bagging fish at an auction, the bag, I'm using the whole bag. And the majority of bag is air. Say it's a 20 centimetre high bag, about four to five centimetres of that bag will be water and the rest will be oxygen. But the shipping restrictions, this is the only way I can bag them. I can't lay them down on their sides, they have to be upright. So unfortunately, this is how I need to pack these fish. Double bagged, five layers of paper between both bags, sitting upright like this in the box. Not exactly how I want to pack them, but that's what I've been told. I have to pack them like I have to pack them like this. Okay, that's one bag. Hopefully they're be all right. So we'll do that two more times. I don't hate bagging them like this. Again, I was told by told I can't lay the bags on their sides. I was tempted to just do it. I want to go all that way, and then they tell me no, and they're not going to accept them. I am taking supplies with me, other bags, more elastic bands, more tape, and water. So there we go. Last bag. There's all three bags in the double bagged in this styrofoam box. Now I'm gonna just seal this up with this other bag. That is a requirement apparently. All bagged up in a single bag now. So they're basically triple bagged. I'm just gonna secure the lid a little bit, take the lid back off when I get to the airport, activate the heat pack, and then it should be sweet. Okay guys, so we're getting closer to the airport. Just on the M5 now. And I'm seeing some planes in the sky. Which is a good sign, must be going the right way. A lot of Sydney siders would know this tunnel very well. This is the M5 tunnel. And it goes for quite a while underground, all the way to Sydney Airport pretty much. I used to own a Jeep Wrangler and I forgot that I was gonna be coming this way through this tunnel. And I had to drive through this tunnel with the roof off. <laughs> I forgot all about uh, the, the uh, carbon monoxide poisoning I would get by driving through this tunnel. And um, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't nice. Um, it looks like idiots. This tunnel here, we go underneath Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport, the runway. We actually go underneath the runway. 
and it's actually really cool when um, you see planes just flying overhead and landing and taking off because they just they're right there. Here we are. Okay, guys, the fish are dropped off. Hopefully, they get there all right. So I'm happy to report that all the fish made it to Melbourne healthy. They got there at around midnight and Ben picked them up at around that time. So they were in the bags overall for about 12 hours. Ben reported that the water was still warm uh, when he got them home. So I'm really surprised at that. I guess the newspaper helped as well as the heat pack helped insulate those bags in the water. So that's a good sign and that's given me some confidence for the future if I was to ship fish again. But my main concern with the way I had to pack these fish was the limited amount of oxygen they had available to them in each bag. But thankfully they made it to Melbourne healthy. And now finally, here's some video footage of them in their forever home. So there you go guys, my little vlog on how I ship fish, the first fish I sold from my fish room. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it somewhat informative. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons, I really appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.